Morning guys, welcome to day one of building a web app. And I'm super excited to be building this project. You see, for the past year, I've been posting a lot of short form content, documenting my journey of being a software engineer at Amazon. Day in the life, day in the life, day in the life of a software engineer. But ever since I quit my job back in December, I've been thinking about what I wanted to do next in terms of career and content creation. So after doing some thinking, the thought of building in public came into mind. And the more I thought about it, the more that it made sense. I can keep my software engineering skills sharp by building a web app and teaching those concepts to y'all. And I also can create content about it and share it with you guys. Now, the first thing we want to do when we build out our web app and our project idea is that we want to understand our why and the reasoning and our motivation behind the project. Before you can go live with your web app, you need to build out the idea. Before you can build out the idea, you need to design the idea. Before you design the idea, you need to know what the hell you're even making. And before you can even get to the project idea, you need to have a motivation as to why you're building out that project. The first step in that chain of series is understanding your why and your project motivation. This is a very important part because of these two quotes that I have here. A strong why leads to strong results and a weak why leads to weak results. And plan twice and implement once. The second quote I'll go into in a later video, but the first quote is relevant for this section here. Whether you're building out a project for a resume or you're building up a startup idea, Truly understanding your why at a deep level is going to yield great results. If you're building a startup, you need to know why your startup idea is worth making. Who is your audience? What problem are you trying to solve here? Why should people buy it? And if you're a computer science student, the same thing can apply. If you're building this project for a resume, why should a recruiter stop at your project and consider you as a potential candidate? Why should a hiring manager pick you over the other candidate? Is this something you're passionate about? Can you talk about this project in an interview setting? Trust me when I say this, you want to build out something that you're passionate about and something that you're interested the reason being is it's going to be a lot more fun to build out if it's something that's interesting to you. If your parents or your friends ask you why you're building out this project and you can't answer it with confidence, you either need to reconsider the idea or take a step back and understand your why. Understanding your why gives you a North Star of what you're trying to achieve. And with that North Star, it's going to help you make a lot of the decisions and prioritize different things accordingly. So with that in mind, let's go over my project motivation to give you an idea of what I'm trying to go after here. I want to kind of separate it out into a few sections here. First of all, I just want to preface this. I freaking hate writing with a passion. Growing up, writing in English was not my strong suit. And in software engineering and in my career, I hated writing design docs. But it is a very, very important part of the process and something you just kind of suck up and you kind of have to deal with and learn. So you're going to see my version of writing. I like to jot down a lot of bullet points and then take those bullet points and then convert it into coherent paragraphs and sentences. Okay, so my first why for this project is I want to teach um, software engineering concepts to my audience that I built on TikTok and Instagram and on YouTube as well. And one of the things that I've got to learn throughout last year is I have a lot of CS students that ask me, how do I build a web app and how do I get a job in the industry? And I wanted to make this series to guide them in the right direction on how to build meaningful projects that they can put on their resume in the hopes that they can land um, a big boy job. And the second part is I also want to help entrepreneurs. So people who may not be technically savvy, but they want to build out their own web app. And I want them to have an idea of how to, they can build their web app and the steps they need to take as well. So those are the, my two target audiences. The things I wanna do is to teach, guide, and inspire. And for the second part is what I want to learn and to build. So this will be a lot more tied to the web app idea that I'm going to make. So in this section, I want to go over what technologies I want to learn in this project and what domain and area that I want to um, tackle as well. So just for some background, um, I graduated college with a computer science degree from UCI and I specialized in visual computing. And my job at Amazon for the past two and a half years, I use nothing with that visual computing specialization. But that is something I want to get back into. I learned a lot of new things and it's very, very interesting to me, whether it be computer graphics, uh, 3D modeling, a lot of stuff. I kind of like want to get back into that world. So with that in mind, I want this project to be involved around visual computing. The reason for this is like, if I were to go back to work and to get a job, I want to open up my options and go into the visual computing industry. So at a high level, I want to learn visual computing concepts, deploy those concepts into an interactive website. And I just want it to be where I want to teach what I learn and I want to let people use the code that I write through a web app. And already with these four bullet points, I kind of have a North Star of what my project idea is going to be about. So whenever I want to build a new feature, it has to satisfy a few things. It has to be something that I implement on my own. It has to be a visual computing concept that I learned and I had to be able to deploy it so that people can interact with it. All right, so after some writing, I converted these bullet points into these paragraphs that go over my project motivation. One of my goals is to teach software engineering concepts to my audience. I get a lot of comments and messages on how to build a project 
or the CS job market is cooked. And I really wanted to share what I've learned over the years to computer science students and to non-technical entrepreneurs who want to build out their projects and their startup ideas. And the other thing that I added was getting started is the hardest part when it comes to anything, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's getting more consistent in running, whether it's picking up a new hobby, getting started is always the hardest part. The reason that a lot of people quit on their goals and on their ideas is because the end goal is always so far off in the distance and you don't know the individual steps in order to get there. So I wanted to provide a step-by-step -step process on how to go from your idea all the way to deploying your web app. So that's kind of the thought process and motivation as to why I'm starting this series. This portion is more for me to give y'all an understanding as to why I'm building out this project. The next part is going to be more practical into the, the web app that you guys build on your own. One of my motivations for this project was that I wanted to get back into visual computing. If I were a computer science student, this portion would be, I want to build out a project so that I can have a project for my resume so then that I can get a job in big tech. That would have been my why. Or if I'm an entrepreneur, it would have been, I have this business idea where I can help out X, Y, and Z people. And I want to bid out this idea so then that I can make blank, blank, blank amount of money per year and sustain myself for a living. Now you have a better idea of what I mean by understanding your project motivation. As you go on through your journey of building out a web app, this is going to be your North Star and your motivation as to why you want to complete this project. So I challenge you all to take maybe like, I don't know, like an hour, hour and a half, of doing this exercise for yourself. It doesn't have to be the prettiest, it can just be a rough draft, but doing this exercise forces you to take a step back and to understand why you're building out this project, which will lead me to the next section of the video, which is project ideation. When it comes to brainstorming different ideas of what your web app should be about, you wanna pick something that you're passionate about, and you wanna solve a problem that you've experienced in your personal life. The reason for this is because you're going to have a lot more of a personal attachment to the project that you're building. It's going to be your why and your motivation to finishing out and building the web app. Now the reason they wanna pick something that you're passionate about is because you're personally invested into this area that you're in. With this personal attachment, you automatically become a domain expert in that area. And that's going to help you so much when it comes to designing your solution, making trade-off and coming up with user experiences. It's going to be a lot easier to come up with ideas when it's about an area that you're already personally invested in. And then the second thing is that you wanna solve a problem that you've experienced in your own life. By building a project and an app that you want to see in the world, chances are other people will want the same as well. Because when you experience a problem for yourself and you build out your web app, you become your first user. You're able to put yourself in the user's shoes to come up with the best decisions possible. So with those things in mind, I'm going to brainstorm a few projects regarding my own passions and problems that I see in my own life. And then I'm going to ideate the project that I want to build throughout this series. All right, so an area of interest and passion that I want to build a project around is the gym. So I've been going to the gym ever since I was 18 and I'm 24 now. So that's like around six years. And in those six years, I've watched so much content on social media about gym, fitness, and nutrition. And I feel like I know more about the gym than the average person. I feel like the gym is a perfect area of domain for me to build a project around because I know the struggles and problems that gym goers face. And one of the problems that I face personally when I'm at the gym is having a good way to track my lifts throughout the week. There's this thing called progressive overload where, where you have an exercise, let's take the bench press for example. Every time you do bench press, you either want to add one more rep or you want to add two and a half pounds to that session. You want to progressively overload the weight and the reps that you do so that you can build more muscle and strength throughout the years. And the way that I track my own workouts is I literally pull out my Apple Notes and I type in the words bench press, three by five, and then like what, 300 pounds or something like that. It's a very manual way to do things. And every time I want to refer back to the previous bench session, I have to scroll through my Apple notes to find a previous bench session, and then I can find the weights. I would want a better way to track my workouts and to see, okay, I'm doing bench today. I want to look up bench press and I can see a history of all the bench press sessions that I've done. And it would be nice if I could visualize, you know, the total volume of weight that I'm doing throughout the years. So maybe like at January, 2024, I say that I'm down here. And at the end of the year, I say that my total volume of bench press has gone up, right? It shows that I'm progressively overloading throughout the years. So I feel like that would be a good project to, to make, right? Because one, it solves the problem of me tracking my workouts and two, it's related to the gym. So because of that, when I'm designing the user experience, I have a better idea of what I would want to see. and if this is something that I wanna see, chances are this is something that someone else uh, would want as well. So with this idea in mind, I want to see if it already exists out there in the world. And even if it does, that's totally fine. As I mentioned earlier, 
because you've experienced this problem for yourself, chances are someone else has already experienced that problem and built it out. But what, but what makes, but what will make your app different, but what will make your project and your application different is that you're adding your own flavor and your own twist to it. All right, so let's go to Google and see if an app like this exists out there in the world already. So do apps to track workouts, aggressive overload. And then I see this Reddit thread here. What apps that you use? This guy uses Excel spreadsheet. You strong app, Apple Watch companion, strong app, Fit Notes. I see strong app being used a couple of times. So let's look up what that is. Strong app. Okay, think less, stuff more. Workout tracking. Workbook no back reinvented. You can add your reps, your weight, or you're doing your deadlift. This is the date that you're doing it. You can add a note here. Okay, you can visualize everything as well. Okay, so strong app is pretty much exactly what I want to build here. So this will be going into the list of ideas or inspiration and market research that I want to do for this app. Let's see, strong app pricing. Strong workout app is free to use but offers a premium subscription. So Strong uses a premium model for the app. So I guess an idea that you could have is whatever features that they gate behind a paywall, you can make it free with your app. So that could be your differentiator between your web app idea and that person's web app idea. So next area of passion and interest of mine is DJing. When I was in college, I picked a DJ. And when you DJ, you need to come up with a set list. So a set list would be a list of songs that you'll want to play out for the night. You maybe want to have a house set list. Maybe you want to have a bass set list and all that stuff. And when it comes to creating set lists, my workflow would be that I would want to go to my Spotify and look at my Spotify playlist because I categorize it by like house music, trap music, bass music, and all that stuff. I want a way to visualize and see my playlist but I also want to see the BPM and the key of the songs as well. When it comes to DJing, BPM and key are important because you want to mix a song that is in key. You can think of this as like, you know, like in the color wheel, there's like analogous colors or complementary colors that work well together. When it comes to DJing, you want to mix songs that are in the right key, keys that complement each other. And then you also want to mix songs that are in similar BPMs as well. If you're DJing house music, you want to stay in between like a 120 to 130 BPM because it's easier to transition between those two BPMs. So I would want to have an app where I go pull up my Spotify playlist and I could see the BPM and the key and be like, oh, I think these two songs will work, would work well together and would transition well together. So with this idea in mind, I want to see if it exists out there in the internet already. So I want to type in Spotify, playlist, BPM, and key. Reddit is your best friend when it comes to seeing if an idea or a problem um, exists out there in the world. This is good because it's in the DJing subreddit, Spotify analyst, BPM analyzer. Hello, I often try to use things like record box to give me the key. I hope this helps. Spotify playlist analysis, song data, IO, about sort your music. Let's see what this does. All right, Spotify. Spotify, sort your music, tap into Spotify, sort your music, like so you sort your playlist based off BPM. Okay, that's what I want. No key, but at least BPM's there. Let's see this one. Additional data for Spotify playlist, obtain additional information about a Spotify playlist. Software allows Spotify users to easily view additional details about their songs. While DJs can quickly plan their next set, my set list using our analyzer as a harmonic mixing tool. Tempo, key, Camelot, energy. I like how they do use Camelot here. This is that color wheel um, example that I used. So actually, let me um put in a playlist here and see how it works. Okay, yep, this is the name of my house playlist. And okay, I have key, I have BPM. This is honestly pretty much what I wanted to build out. I think a few things that I would want to see out of this would be, you know how I mentioned the color wheel and the Camelot thing. I would want it to where if I give it a playlist, I would want it to recommend different songs that it thinks would work well together in a DJ transition. Adding some sort of recommendation system and a preview of what the DJ transition would sound like. I think that'd be a really cool thing to add on top of your project. So now I've got the two examples, I'm now going to ID on the project that I want to build out for the series. So for my web app project, I wanted to build something around visual computing. In the previous section where I talked about my why and my project motivation, Visual computing was something that I studied back in college, something that I was interested in and something that I want to get back into. And the problem that I wanted to solve was that when I was studying visual computing back in college, there was no easy way for me to visualize specific visual computing techniques. You see, when you want to do things like RGB extraction, maybe image detection, face morphing and all that stuff, you would have to code it out run the code, and only then would you see a visual computing concept applied to an image. I really wish there was an easy way for me to just drag and drop an image or a video onto a web app, 
and then I can see that visual computing concept performed on it. So I wanted to build an interactive platform where you can upload an image or a video and you can apply any visual computing concept onto it. How the project would work would be that I will learn a concept, I will code out that concept, then I will deploy it onto the web app for people to interact with it and to learn from it. And that is the project that I'm going to be building out in this series. So I hope you learned something new and see you in the next one.